Welcome back to Media 7. Graffiti. The Greeks had it, the Romans did too. These days, the writing on the wall is variously considered a vivid cultural expression, and yes, this comparison has actually been made, an urban blight akin to terrorism. It's also at the centre of an intriguing dispute in Auckland that raises the question, who gets to say what art is in a modern city? Jose Barbosa, or J-Barb as he's known in hip-hop circles, <laughs> investigates. 600,000 years ago, Tharg discovered that his poos could be smeared on the walls of his cave. Since then, man has always enjoyed scribbling on walls. But the problem for graffiti artists is that there's always someone who likes having a pristine fence. Piss off you, bastards. That's what I say. Yeah, bloody take. I say, piss off you, taken bastards. Which is all fair enough, of course. But for the last 30 years, graffiti's won more respect from the mainstream. I live in these units and I'm associated with the development of them. The words are very well written, they're not offensive at all, in fact they even add a bit of colour to the place. Modern graffiti has evolved into different genres, the most visible being the style influenced by American hip-hop culture. One of its most prolific and respected artists is Elliot O'Donnell, a.k.a. Askew. Ten years ago, he painted this mural in central Auckland. Since then, he's maintained and repainted it all on his own dime. Here's what the wall looks like now, after council contractors swooped in. Yeah, their assumption basically was that there must be a mistake, so they started calling around, they, um, speaking to their, their superiors and whatnot, and um, they were told, no, no, the, the request has come straight from the landlord, um, and they don't want it there uh, because it's illegal, uh, which was actually untrue. Elliot says he had permission from the tenants and the landlord to paint the mural. He says the council had no right to paint over his artwork. I felt really wrong, you know. I felt like the council were kind of stealing like a really like legitimate platform from me and my friends, like something that um, was really none of their business. And so um, from that point we got um, an apology from Len Brown as he looked into it and then looked to rectify the situation um, and that council officers would be approaching me. One of the council officers involved is this man, Rob Shields, Auckland's graffiti prevention officer. Seen here starring in a New Zealand Herald video obviously made by people moonlighting from the Crime Watch production team. The public in Auckland have had a guts full. They want blood. If they do it without permission, it's criminal vandalism and will be treated as such. Askew says Rob Shields has, on behalf of the council, offered a new mural to the landlords. A mural painted by a council approved artist. Um, and if I wanted to, I could submit uh, a design to them uh, for them to, to determine you know, whether it was appropriate enough. Alas, the council's taste is usually about as fresh as a bedwet as underlay. So I feel there was a bit of cunning on Rob Shield's behalf because um, they know ethically, you know, morally, that the only person that's been wronged in the situation is me and, and my friends. This is my specialty, this is what I do. And it's better left alone, it's better with no like kind of bureaucratic involvement. Like they should really just kind of butt the hell out of the picture to be honest. Well, that demands a response, and to that end, I'm joined by Auckland Mayor Len Brown. Thank you for joining us, Mayor. It's great to be here, Russ. Now, let's go through the facts of this case. I think everyone acknowledges now that it was the council's mistake that the wall was painted over in the first place. And, and I must say, I watched this unfold on the internet. You were bailed up on Twitter. You responded. <coughs> I thought that was quite admirable. There was an apology. It all seemed like it was going to um, be resolved happily. Mm. What happened? Look, I think for a start, um, I just want to say that um, it was brilliant uh, to actually get this issue up on Twitter. It's the reason why I'm on Twitter and on Facebook, uh, is to really just uh, make myself available and to enable the community to have a real serious platform. Uh, you know, my mandate was to be the inclusive mayor and to be accessible to the community, and so that certainly has given me the opportunity. Wasn't intending for it to be on this one, mm. uh, but it's been brilliant. Uh, secondly, in terms of where it's gone wrong, I think there's just been a miscon, continual miscon, it's a bit like Murphy's Law actually, Russ, uh, a little bit of a miscon around whose rights it is to repaint the wall, and it's the owner's rights. And uh, if he chooses uh, the young fellow who's doing the work and has maintained that work, uh, then that's his right to do so. 
So I think, let's cut to the chase. How on earth did the graffiti prevention officer, Rob Shields, get, get himself in there? Uh, and, and I suppose let's also talk about Tony Crampton, who's the graffiti prevention advisor. What exactly is the role of these people? Do they actually get to decide what art is? Actually, their, their primary role is, is to deal with um, anti tagging initiatives, and they absolutely have my backing. Uh, you'll know from um, my experience as the, the Mayor of Manukau, and certainly now as the Mayor of Auckland, I've made this an issue where uh, I have a very clear and simple philosophy, uh, that is clean, tidy and proud. Uh, I love my city. I want Auckland to be the most beautiful city in the world. Uh, and tagging doesn't necessarily add to that. Uh, and so, uh, let's so hang on, the, so okay. I just, just wanted to, to sort of finish through on that. So guys like Rob, uh, Graham Baker out uh, uh, Manukau Beautification Trust, uh, Iris Donoghue, Tag Out Trust in Waitakere do awesome work in basically dealing with the tagging, the stuff that really is a bit of a blight in our community and we, we have a real strong mandate for so we deal with that now. When you get people who are passionate out in the workplace, and Rob certainly is, you're going to make the odd mistake and he sure did on this occasion. Has he acknowledged that to you, that he's made a mistake no, and even getting yeah. involved? Look Russ, um, you know, this is a new job. Uh, I'm trying to get to meet 8,500 employees as well as 1.4 million people. So I haven't had the, a hookup with, um, uh, with him on this issue as yet. But I'm just saying to you and to, the, to those who are present here tonight and to the community uh, that uh, my view is, and I will uh, continue to tell this to Doug Mackay as a CEO, the view is the uh, owner of that property is entitled. If this is what he wants to see in his property, uh, graffiti art, and I like what I've seen there, I think it's hugely colourful uh, and adds to our urban landscape, then let him rip. And, and uh, I have to say this doesn't seem to have been the first time this has happened. This is before your council even yeah. existed, but, but Rob Shields has gone and painted over work that appeared to be valued by local residents. I'm just not sure that an ex-cop whose job is cleaning off walls should be saying what art is in a modern city. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm telling you uh, what uh, the rights are here and by implication that is what Rob's position is going to be. What I am saying to you is that I absolutely value public art. Uh, I'm working flat out with the public art team in Auckland and people like Billy Apple uh, to really add to the look and the feel and the creativity of the city and the way in which we present ourselves and I want to encourage that. Um, I know that uh, there are sometimes difficult decisions to be made around graffiti art as against tagging how much power do you have over these guys? Because it appeared that you, you actually reached an amicable conclusion and, and then a, a council official with a dubious mandate, you know, yeah, the amicable come back conclusion to this, was, came in. Yeah. The amicable conclusion, Russ, was we'd done wrong. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, clearly outside of our ambit. It's up to the owner. You want to have that work on there. We'll make sure that we sort it out and get the work back on. And the presumption was that, uh, that the owner would just to do what he needed to do and make an arrangement with, with our council. And, uh, you know, so it's gone slightly, so continued you're, you're, to go on sideways you are from there. you confident then that no oh, yeah. pressure was put on the owner? Would no. you be concerned if there had been? I would be concerned that I didn't think we were following due process. And the process, uh, in my understanding, certainly my leadership around this issue, is that you get and talk to the owner, the owner makes the choice. Mm. Now, th th there's a petition up about this with, with 500 signatures. It seems to have exposed a wider issue. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder whether you, know, you set yourself up as the hip hop mayor, as, as the mayor of a <laughs> I creative didn't set modern city. Well, up you as allowed yourself mayor. to be. Come the on, mayor, look the, at me, the, mayor, the mayor of a, of a modern <laughs> creative city. Do I really look no, like no, that? No, hip -hop mayor? I'm, I'm serious, actually, because, <laughs> because I, I think there are people out there who feel that. The, they can only personally express themselves if they do it the way the council says they, they yeah. must. And, and it seems to go beyond mere regulations because the roles and yeah. uh, rules aren't very clear. How can you fix this? Look, I, I think they are fairly clear and sometimes it's just the way in which you interpret them. So, you know, there, there will be a discussion uh, between me and the staff in terms of what we do with that. I don't want to turn this into a personalisation of the person because, look, I back that passion. Um, you know, council staff are uh, often parodied for a lack of it. And uh, if there's anything I bring to the job, it's passion. And so I recognise it when I see it in other people. But I also recognise that if you haven't gone and done due process and you've racked someone up unnecessarily, as has happened in this instance, then we just got to correct that. And that's what I'm about. Jolly good, Len Brown. I hope you talk to the artists themselves as well, because I think Absolutely. they'd like to talk to you. I met that guy on the street. Right. Oh, thank you, Len Brown. Uh, now, before we go,
Uh, some time ago, we featured a New Zealand-developed computer mouse, the Swift Point. Well, 2011 is looking like Swift Point's year. It came top of a Wall Street Journal survey of travel mice, was shown at CES in Las Vegas, and has been officially dubbed a cool find by Silicon Valley legend Guy Kawasaki. And happily, it's a Christchurch business. It's still trading. Its creator, Grant Odgers, continues to work on the edge of the CBD. Hurrah! And that's all for this show. Thanks again to Len Brown, to David Kemmies, and to you for watching. We'll be back at the same time next week. Until then, goodbye.